let's like start with brain health and go a little bit deeper on what you were talking about with respect to like brain derived neurotropic factor and like what this is doing. So like when we're building up lactate as a result of vigorous exercise, it's passing through the brain blood, the blood brain barrier. It's going into our brains and it's doing all sorts of beneficial things like something called uh, neurogenesis, right? Like, so talk a little bit more in depth about the importance of lactate or the relationship between it and and the healthy brain that we all are trying to, you know, kind of foster. Yeah, um, I would love to. It's it's one of the reasons why I, I really try to engage in uh, a lot of vigorous intensity exercise that I've got neurodegenerative disease on both sides of my family. So for me, I'm very brain focused when it comes to exercise. It's, it's, it's one of the main reasons I do exercise. I feel better, but I also know that I'm delaying the aging of my brain and helping prevent neurodegenerative disorders. So lactate, um, you know, it depends on how, there's a lot of factors in, at play in terms of how much lactate you're going to make, right? So how in, how intense you're going in terms of your exercise, um, your mitochondrial function, a lot of individual variability here at play. But generally speaking, you know, when you start to go into that vigorous intensity zone, you know, you can start typically our steady state lactate levels are like less than one millimolar. Mm -hmm. And when you get, when you start to go into, you know, 80, 85%, 90% max heart rate, you can get anywhere between seven to 14 millimolar of, of lactate in your blood stream. And, and this is, can be measured, you know, you can go out and get tests. I've measured it before um, for myself. Uh, the, the, the lactate levels don't last long in your, in your blood system. And that is because it is being transported and going and taken up by other tissues. So really, uh, as far as I've measured repeatedly, it's about a 20 minute, about 20, 25 minutes, and then it goes back to your baseline. So there've been a variety of studies that have shown, by the way, Dr. George Brooks from UC Berkeley was the first to really propose at the time this lactate shuttle theory, as he called it. And it's not really a theory anymore. It's been proven time and time again. But he was really the first to, to propose that lactate was being transported into circulation. It was being taken up by a variety of other tissues, notably the brain, and that it was you know having beneficial effects in these other organs. So... Um, in the brain. So there is a transporter. Lactate goes through this, it's called an MCT transporter, and it gets into the brain. And there's been a variety of human studies showing that actually during physical activity, lactate is fueling the brain because, you know, your brain is working hard. To, your heart is working hard during exercise. Your lungs are working hard. Your brain is also working hard, right? I mean, you know this as your as an endurance athlete, your brain is also working hard during exercise. And lactate's fueling that um, fueling the brain activity that's been shown. And um, some of that also has to do with the fact that lactate, I, it's increasing brain-derived neurotropic factor. So you mentioned that, BDNF for short. And um, that is doing a lot of things. It is helping grow new neurons, um, particularly in a part of the brain called the hippocampus, which is involved in learning and memory. It's also a part of the brain that atrophies with Alzheimer's disease. So um, there have been a variety of studies that have shown even older adults that are engaging in moderate intensity activity for about a year can increase the size of their hippocampus by like 2%, wow. which is amazing because typically older adults lose in their their hippocamp hippocampus atrophies with time. So not only were they fighting and staving off the atrophying, but they were also increasing it. So so that was pretty. Um, I think one of the one of the big eye opening studies, and this was this was over ten years ago. This was like a 2012 study that was published um, showing this. So um, the brain derived neurotrophic factor is growing new neurons can increase the size of the hippocampus, but also it's really important for something called neuroplasticity. And that is, it, it, it's kind of like you can think about keeping our brains more pliable and, and malleable and um, adaptable. So really neuroplasticity allows our brains to adapt to a changing environment. And this is important for aging, but it's also important for mental health. So, so people with major depressive disorder, for example, they have dysfunction and neuroplasticity. So, and, and that kind of makes sense, right? If you can't adapt to a changing environment, it's very stressful and can cause anxiety, it can be depressing. Mm. So um, there've been a variety of different, you know, researchers that are trying to target neuroplasticity as a treatment for depression. So neuroplasticity not only plays a role in brain aging, but it also plays a role in mental health. And I, I think that's important to, to point out because, I mean, I think, it, I think almost everyone by now knows that 
exercise is one of the best yeah. things you can do for mental health, right? I mean, it's like, it's just, you can't deny it, right? I mean, you go out even just, even doing like a 10 minute high intensity workout, you feel better, you know, you feel better. Sure, but that's that's downstream of all kinds of other things that are happening, right? The hormonal regulation aspect of it. I mean, that, you know, how how important is the plasticity piece in the mental health conversation and you know what is the significance of of that plasticity increase as a result of vigorous exercise yeah it's a good thing that you point out i think there are a lot of things that are changing with exercise. I mean, endorphins that make you feel good, you know, endocannabinoids that make you feel good. I mean, there's serotonin gets increased, right? So there's a lot of different, I would say, um, short-term effects for for that are potentially responsible for the beneficial, like, elevation and mood that you experience after exercise. With neuroplasticity, um, I would argue there's more of a long-term effect, right? It's your 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 brain is now able to um, adapt better to a changing environment, and that's going to have a more of a long-term consequence. So neuroplasticity is another really important thing that brain-derived neurotrophic factor regulates. And again, coming back to the lactate, which is what we were talking about, um, you know, lactate is also it, it, when I say it's a signaling molecule, it is it is communicating and and activating a lot of different things in the brain. So norepinephrine is another one that's been shown to increase. And norepinephrine is a neurotransmitter that is responsible for focus, attention, but also mood. Mm -hmm. You know, so people are often treated with nor norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors for um, anxiety and also depression. So lactate plays a role in increasing that as well. Um, but again, we're just getting down into the nitty gritty of one aspect of exercise. And as you pointed out, there's a whole plethora of changes that occur with exercise that are beneficial, not limited to lactate. I just, I, I think the lactate story is so important because it it really is um, a proven mechanism, both human and animal studies. It's something that's measurable, um, you know, it, and, and, and again, it's something also that we've known is, it, it links it links the more high intensity exercise, the more vigorous exercise with, you know, a lot of these beneficial effects on the brain. Mm -hmm.